Chris, thanks very much for joining us. Um, for those who don't know, just give us a quick introduction to Time Investments. Well, Time is part of a, of a big group. Um, you know, between us, we manage you know, coming up to sort of four and a half billion of assets at the moment. The bulk of those assets sit within sort of wider um, you know, real estate and infrastructure sectors, such as renewable energy, social, social infrastructure, and the such like. Time itself is, is the retail facing arm of that business, where we have a range of different fund products um, in the infrastructure and real estate space, but also some inheritance tax products um, as well. And you're obviously looking at the, the kind of trends specifically in, in real estate and infrastructure. Um, I suppose, what are you seeing at the moment in terms of infrastructure markets um, and, and the prospects in, in 2022 and going forward? Yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing increased demand um, from investors into sort of more general infrastructure space. Um, and you're really sort of seeing that borne out um, by the number of sort of new companies coming to market, specifically within the investment trust market. You know, 2021 was yet another year, I think, where they broke records, both in terms of the number of new, coming, new companies coming to the market and listing, but also the existing companies that are there already. Um, many of which are you know, already quite large companies coming back and raising sort of money in the secondary markets. And a lot of these issues as well, easily sort of raising it at least what they want, if not more, and being sort of very oversubscribed. So we're seeing a lot of demand from investors for that. Um, and that's you know, ultimately, I think, driven by you know, the characteristics of infrastructure um, and sort of the, this, perhaps the environment that we're in today and why it sort of fits well within what's going on within the wide market. Um, and in terms of um, uh, challenges like potentially inflation and those kinds of things, how do you see that um, impacting um, the infrastructure side, Chris? You know, there are certainly risks out there at the moment. And 2022, I think, is going to be a year where there are considerably greater risks than there were in 2021. Other than perhaps, you know, 2021, we really had COVID. I think that, that risk is sort of slightly dissipated now. But, you know, from where we sit today, looking out over the year ahead, and we've really seen it in the first few weeks of the year, for example, you know, we've seen volatility um, blow out to levels that we haven't really seen within a year. And also, you know, within sort of, I guess, the two main asset classes in equities and fixed income, you know, we've seen valuations, you know, right up, you know, at all time highs, frankly. Um, we're slightly sort of rolling off that. Inflation, you know, we're seeing sort of day after day sort of new record highs being reached, not only here in the UK, but also in Europe and definitely over in the US, where the inflation figures are sort of north of five, six, seven percent now. It's also signed perhaps of economic growth um, having peaked or peaking, um, which is another big risk, especially with the you know, potential tightening of um, monetary conditions, which we started to see. Um, you know, tightening into a slowing economy um, historically hasn't had a particularly good the next short to medium term period after that. And, you know, yesterday in the UK, we raised interest rates and we've certainly got pretty hawkish ECB even now at the moment as well, talking about you know, what they're going to do to try and control inflation. Um, and then obviously in the US, the Fed um, have definitely pivoted to, towards a much more um, hawkish stance. And within that environment, it's going to be um, a much more difficult environment to make money. Um, certainly within the fixed income markets. Um, and also you're seeing those two main asset classes in equities and bonds um, being much more positively correlated than where they used to be, which, which is a trait of sort of this high inflationary environment that frankly not many of us are used to or, or you know, been around investing in. And when you have that you know, positive correlation between equities and bonds, you're clearly not getting the benefit of diversification from the fixed income part of your portfolio that you might have been used to, certainly if you'd be managing assets in the sort of traditional 60-40 portfolio way of investing, um, which I think means you know, there's, there's a real opportunity um, for, for investors to diversify um, their exposures into more alternatives such as infrastructure, which I think, you know, at least on a relative, if not absolute basis, can perform quite well within that environment. Um, because you know that they have inflation linked characteristics um they you know very much it's definitely a very defensive asset class the counterparties as well typically tend to be very high quality and um, certainly with the infrastructure um you know if it isn't the government itself it might be another sort of public body such as the nhs for example um, so they've got really attractive characteristics and um, specifically within markets that are looking um slightly more on edge like they are today and i think really to sort of further support that case for infrastructure. You've also got what the, you know, the, the plans that the governments have got to really sort of, um, you know, help the economies try and recover um, from COVID. And, and they've got these huge spending packages, um, all directed towards infrastructure, 
to, to tr essentially try and sort of improve economies and make them more resilient um, and sustainable in the future. Chris, there's a big focus at the moment on uh, on ESG, sustainability. How much, from your perspective, um, is that playing into investor demand for areas like uh, renewable energy, um, but also, I suppose, social impact and, and, and social infrastructure? Yeah, it's, it's certainly an area, of course, you know, that, that we've seen growing interest um, from investors sort of demanding more for, from us as an investment house, um, you know, no doubt because, that you know, they're being asked more questions as well from their clients. So it, it is a big theme. And going back to what I said about those government um, spending packages, you know, I mentioned that they're all really trying to rebuild these economies in a more sort of sustainable and resilient way. And if you read into the detail of what they really mean by that, that they're really sort of pushing the, you know, the decarbonisation of economies um, and essentially trying to you know, make us sort of more you know, resilient from an environmental point of view in the future as well. And so a lot of those spending packages are being directed towards those areas, such as um, you know, wind or solar or, or what have you, or energy efficiency. And so one of the big themes within a fund like ours, um, you can actually see, you know, when you look through the portfolio, it's quite a meaningful part of the portfolio is playing into that theme, um, which is the right thing to do, I think, because there is that sort of real structural positive tailwind to the sector, whereby, you know, the government spending a lot more money on this space has already and will continue to incentivize a huge amount more money from the private sector, which in turn sort of clearly sort of helps support valuations, it will create new investment opportunities and it might even sort of create new asset classes to invest into as well. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting and growing sector. Um, thanks very much for joining us, Chris. Thank you very much.